Welcome back to the British Teen Championships preview series. As always, I'm Jason, and joining me this time, we have another fantastic teen athlete in Thomas Yarrow. Uh, Yarrow, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I, uh, I'm glad it's hot now, but it's so much better with the weather, especially because I can train outside more, which is so much more fun. Where do you train normally? Because I've seen your Instagram, and it almost looks like you're training in a sauna. Yeah, so I am... Um, most of I train from home. I am um, last September or at August time. My dad started. We moved into this house last February in September time. Started building a gym outside because I knew that I can't like because my parents had to take me to the gym I otherwise train at, which is All World Fitness, which is in Suffolk. And um, so we started building that, and then I got barbells and stuff. I sold by GHD, loads of equipment, just because I knew that because I'm, I'm training two sessions a day usually before college, after college. It's I just like need to train at home, and to be fair, like it does get quite hot. Now, I'll be honest, <laughs> it does get quite hot. Um, I forgot to ask initially, how old are you, and which age category are you competing in? So I'm 17, um, 18 in October, and I'm competing in 16, 17 division. It's so like my final year um, in it, so it's going to be good. I'm excited for it. Yeah, final year, so go out in a bang. Yeah. yeah. Now I know that this is the the first time that you've signed up for the British Teen Championships. Uh, how did you first hear about it? How did you find it? So I found it on Instagram. I, um, it came up one of my recommend, like, recommended, so I clicked on it, had a look. And then my coach said that, um, that I should sign up because I was, he said it's going to be a good competition. So I, said, I thought, okay, it's a competition, I might as well, and I'm excited for it. Signed up, and I know some of like, the guys, uh, some of my other mates signed up for it, so I thought it's going to be really good. And then when I saw that it was four qualifiers over the weekend, I was like, this is going to be really good. I really, I, I think that's awesome because it's like the quarterfinals for the, the games. And I, I don't know why, but just because that structure means that you'll feel the fatigue from previous workouts. Say if you do like two on the Sunday, or the Saturday, sorry, you might have to repeat some, you end up doing like two on the Sunday or maybe even more. And then I just like it because it really tests how fit the athlete is, if they're able to still lift heavy and still be heavy under fatigue. Compared to like normal qualifiers, which is still fun, that like Euros, they were still really good because they're like once a week, for like three weeks, you can kind of structure your whole week around it. So like you almost peak. So obviously you've peaked up to it, but like make sure you feel fresh on that day. But when you come to qualifiers, make sure you feel fresh leading up to the weekend and then just kind of recover during the workouts over there like the weekend. Yeah, so it I'd say it like more closely emulates a kind of in-person competition yeah. right because you you know you're not turning up doing event yeah. one and then going home for a week getting some rest and coming back for right. event two so this is your, your first time doing it I mean you were saying it's going to be your first time uh, for the Europeans when you go for that and yeah. I mean ideally if you can make it through these uh, these qualifiers yeah. and get to the in-person event in Southampton as well these will be your first uh, times competing in you know live competition yeah how do you feel about that then I'm, like, I'm really looking forward to it just because we are like I watched the Euros the Euro finals last year in I think January, I think they were February, and came away from that thinking, right, I want to qualify. And that's all I'm thinking about. And then I started with my coach in December 7th, I think the day was. And then our target, like we had a talk and our target was just to uh, peak and qualify for the Euros. So this is like my coach Reese Mitchell. And literally our whole first few months building tons of strength like because my strength is always an issue just because I'm not like naturally the strongest I used to play rugby and I played for like seven years but I still wasn't like really strong to be honest right so I our main focus focus was getting really strong and then we got to like March time and then started to peak for the Euros and that was that was like pretty hard to be fair our training was like we had their condition we had a lot of conditioning Still like ton of strength work, like but it proves that you can like I hit a 110 clean. So that's just someone cutting outside. It proved that I could hear like get a 110 clean. So it was just awesome. It was just yeah. awesome. Like, I could on a fitness cycle, I could still clean 110 kilos. Yeah. And and when you're saying you're not the strongest, and then you're telling me you've got a one yeah. clean, I'm sitting here just slowly dying inside. <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, so Reese is coaching you. Well, I've had a chance to speak to Reese, and we know that he's a fantastic athlete. So, and no doubt you're in good hands. And it sounds like, you know, the way you speak about it, you're you're clearly like very dialed in on your plan on what you want to do. You've kind of it's not just 
it's not just a fun hobby, right? It's, it seems like you're very focused and directed on this. So you've That's mentioned great. that you were playing rugby previously. What yeah. is kind of your background then within sport and also kind of what made you then move into CrossFit in the first place? So I started rugby when I was like seven, like seven or eight, played for seven years and I played like scrum half, a um, bit of flanker too. So it was, and I played, I stopped last year just because I wanted to focus on CrossFit. Like I was doing a rugby session. I was training in the morning, CrossFit stuff, rugby session, about two hours of rugby, then two hours of CrossFit after. Wow. So it was literally like, I was focusing on CrossFit more than rugby. And I'm just like, it's, there's no point doing both because I just lost the love for the rugby just because CrossFit was just everything I wanted in the sport. I'm just kind of over the rugby now. I've played it for seven years. I thought I'd do that professionally. Like my aim was to play professionally in Australia for like super rugby team. And then eventually it was just like, man, because it's so much more fun. Like it suits my mentality more, I think. And I'm because I've quite an obsessive mentality. Like if I do something, I'm gonna go like all in on it and make sure I reach my goal. So it just suits me so much better. Yeah. What element of CrossFit is it then that you particular is like this is the thing, this is what I love about it the most? I think it's mainly because it produces the fittest people on earth. And that was what really hit me at the start. And the movements obviously are, are really cool and a lot of people can't do them, but it was mainly that it, it produced the fittest on earth. And I was just like, I want to be the fittest on earth. That was all my goal was, I used to do a lot cross country, trained a lot. And I've always been like determined and disciplined. Like I used to go and running. At, I remember I had a cricket game once in year eight and I wasn't in CrossFit then, but I was had a cricket game. Before the cricket game, I was determined to just go and run round our, like three, three miles round our, uh, around our school just because I wanted to train and when I found CrossFit and it said fits on earth I was like that's what I want to do and then the movements are just so dynamic and it's not just bodybuilding movements which aren't functional they're just so isolated it was it was fun because it was always different and there was you could like train different stimuluses and different like zones of training thresholds and training it was just so fun and I think I start like what documentaries that it, the fact that it produced the fitness on earth just was literally like that. It hit me so quick. And then I was just like, that's all I want to do. And then that's literally all I did. I played rugby as well. Like I had Saturday games and Sunday games. But all I, like, even before the game, I was thinking about the workouts I was doing the day before or the workouts I was going to do next week. And I was just like, okay, it's not healthy to do both anymore just because I'm doing more CrossFit than I am rugby. And I'm just not focusing on rugby as much. So, I can't compete at rugby at the highest level because I'm not focusing on it as much. I'm focusing more on CrossFit. I'm going to go to compete in CrossFit at the highest level. So that's kind of the way I thought about it. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So a couple of things I take away from this is I don't think you have anything to worry about <laughs> doing like four events or, you know, kind of four qualifiers over the course of a weekend. If yeah. you were doing CrossFit in the morning, rugby in the middle <laughs> and CrossFit again in the evening, it sounds like your, your body is probably quite used to that volume of training so I that's it, very yeah. impressive i think to be fair like i stopped playing rugby so like a year and a half ago and when i um started my coach like the idea was that we're gonna dial in your weaknesses and like we're gonna just build the foundation of strength and gymnastics so like when i started my coach i couldn't do for example bar muscle ups in wads chest bars under fatigue pull ups under fatigue and my i needed technique improvements everywhere so then I dropped, literally dropped, I was, because I was just doing stuff I wanted to before, but loads of training, like stupid amounts, because I thought that's what I wanted to do. And then I just wasn't improving, like my gymnastics was rubbish, just because I wasn't focusing on it. Because I think like every athlete needs a coach. Like, even if you're a coach, you see coaches have coaches, yeah. just because otherwise you, they can be accountable for what you do. You can log everything in. I mean, if anything, I feel like we've done a massive ad for Reese. So <laughs> <laughs> if I it... say I've said to him loads, like I've I have a training partner, someone from training at the gym, like called Mia, and I said to her, You need to get on this program. Like, I'm telling you, my power clean went from 75 kilos to hundred kilos and probably more now. Like, I'm telling you, and like my fitness went up, this programming works. And I've I uh, I t t always tag like Mitch Fit Coaching and Reese on my Instagram just because like it his programming works like it's not a joke like, it's insane all like this stuff and like his coaching is also really good like he would chat a lot to you i just think it's a it's a good like relationship as well like coach athlete relationship so i just think like the improvements i've had with him and just like second to none it's just like i laugh about it like, with my parents sometimes just like how like 
compared to where I was at and now I'm, where I'm at now. It's just like insane. Well, I mean, this is, it's really incredible to kind of hear your, your journey and, and the progress you have made. And I really hope that, you know, having the, the team championships and the Europeans as well as sort of these goals that you're working toward. I mean, making that progress when you haven't got a competition is already incredible. But then, you know, when you get that kind of surge yeah. from competing, I'm really exactly. hoping that exactly. good things are going to happen for you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Um, I hope people go and find you on, on Instagram and see some of this progress. And maybe then they'll jump over and see Reese <laughs> as well and <laughs> try and get on his coach, coaching so they can uh, follow your example there. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in Southampton because I, I have a feeling that you're going to be really pushing to to make it to those top six yeah, spots. We'll so that'll be I'm great. Hoping. I'm hoping we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping to qualify. Brilliant. Should be good. Ah, well, we're hoping for you. So <laughs> thank you everyone for uh, sticking around and watching the video. Uh, but don't forget to, to like, subscribe, because we'll probably have uh, some interviews maybe down the line from the competition itself. Uh, and look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you once again to Yarrow uh, and we'll end it here.